Hey YouTube family, Mike Jones here, back with another video on my channel where we talk about all things investing and personal finance with the genuine hope that we will be able to inspire someone to go ahead and start their financial freedom journey today. With that said, today we're going ahead and getting into um, exactly what the heck is a de minimis. Um, and you may be asking, what is a de minimis? Well, you have to wait until after this for that to be explained to you. Hey YouTube family, so welcome back to my channel. Um, so as I was talking about prior, we're gonna go ahead and get into what exactly is a de minimis. And to aid us with this, because I honestly didn't know what a de minimis was until about a week ago, and we're gonna use a screen recording and we're gonna refer to Vanderbilt uh, University to help us with this. And so here we are, a de minimis is a limited balance retirement um, distributions. And what that means is, um, Basically, when you have a de, uh, a de minimis or your uh, financial institution coins the phrase uh, de minimis, that means that your uh, retirement distributions or the contributions you've made to your, um, your 401k, it may be, or some other employer-sponsored uh, retirement plan, um, basically the company has decided that um, the contribution that you have made to that um, company doesn't meet their criteria for having them keep it after um, you are no longer associated with the company. So in some cases, um, for example, if a company requires you to have uh, $10,000 uh, to keep your uh, 401k uh, going with them, um, after you um, split ways with them, if you only have $7,500 in your uh, retirement account when you part ways with them um, and your uh, your gains don't get to that $10,000 limit, then um, about a year, maybe six months, um, it just depends on when the company actually finds out that you're still tied to the company in that way and you have a 401k or an employer-sponsored plan through them that they decide to cut ties with that and it forces the financial institution to go ahead and withdraw all the money from that uh, respective 401k and either uh, give you the option to do uh, three or four things and we're gonna go through that right now. So um, it says, if you are notified, you must take a distribution. You may choose uh, to do one of the following within 60 days of notification. You may roll over your balance to another required or another qualified retirement plan, such as a new uh, employer's 401k or 403b plan. So let's say that you transferred or like you went to another job and you had parted ways with the other job. If you have a new 401k at the new job that you have, you can go ahead and roll over your 401k from your old job into the new job um, when your financial institution notifies you that there will be a de minimis uh, happening or occurring in your account. And so that's a way to go ahead and not lose much uh, um, traction in the time that you've had your 401k. But there are other ways um, that are uh, less conventional or um, less ideal um, when having to deal with something like this. So let's go ahead and look at that. So a, the next thing that you can go ahead and do is have your, uh, your balance rolled over to an individual retirement account. And this is one of the more feasible options um, because the third option would be to request a cash distribution. If you do not take action by the deadline listed in your notification, this option will be selected by default for you and you'll be sent a check for the balance of the account minus Applicable, ta applicable taxes and penalty penalties. Now, um, this personally happened to me and that's why we're talking about it. Um, so I actually have two 401ks that are in the process of this de minimis that I was uh, talking to you about. So I had uh, one for uh, $3,800 um, in one 401k account from a company that I worked for previously and they had a $5,000 minimum that I did not meet um, in the time of being employed by them. And so because of that, here I am 
um, trying to figure out what I was going to do myself. And then uh, I also have another 401k from this year um, with a company I worked with before I was furloughed where um, I had about $800 in the account before uh, being furloughed for the rest of the year. And now I'm just receiving papers that um, I'm also going through the same uh, situation with that. And so um, at first, this was a really stressful ordeal for me. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the screen recording because we don't need this anymore. But at first, this was a really um, stressful ordeal for me. Um, I didn't know what to do. Um, it really put me in a bind because I was like, I, like, I don't want to withdraw. I know one of the number one things that you don't want to do as a investor is withdraw the money, especially if you're a buy and hold investor like myself. Um, I didn't feel like getting penalized for over contributing to my IRA. And so I've weighed the options and looked at things that I can do um, to minimize um, the loss because there will be a loss. And so this is what I came up with. Um, the money that will be coming from my first 401k will be uh, $3,300. And the reason it's not that $3,800 is because they actually had sent me this notification 60 days prior that um, I was going to be going through this process. So all the money that I just gained um, from, you know, the time of it being in that 60 days uh, is null and void. So I can't get those or I can't get those gains back, unfortunately. So um, I'm out five hundred dollars on on top of whatever uh, penalty that I have for uh, either over um, con or over contributing to my uh, Roth IRA or uh, withdrawing altogether. And so what I've decided to do is just over contribute to my Roth IRA. Now, you may be wondering, why would I over contribute knowing there's a tax penalty? Well, the reason being is because if I was to withdraw any amount of money from my um, my uh, distribution that they're going to be giving me, I would uh, be held accountable for a 25% penalty um, because of my tax bracket on top of a 10% uh, early withdrawal penalty for withdrawing the money before I was 59 and a half years old. And... 35% just didn't make sense to me um, versus the 6% that I'll get for um, the tax penalty of over contributing. And I would much rather take that 6% loss and then just um, shift the money over to a 2021 contribution um, uh, instead of you know taking a 35% loss. And so that's what I've decided to do with my um, eligible 401ks is just contribute the four thousand dollars to my four or to my IRA, um, which would bring me to a seven thousand dollar contribution limit uh, contribution over the six thousand dollar contribution limit. So I'd get taxed on about a thousand dollars. So six percent of a thousand dollars is about sixty dollars. So I'm only losing sixty dollars um, besides that null and void five hundred dollars that I previously lost. Um, by not even knowing that this was happening. Um, so a much uh, better difference. And it gives me a um, a kind of a, 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 an advantage or a foot forward um, as far as my contribution for tw uh, 2021. Uh, with 2021, I'll already have $940 in my Roth IRA, which means I'll only have to worry about contributing another five $5,060 um, for the whole year, which will be absolutely great in a time when we don't know uh, where our funds will be coming from. And, you know, with employment being shaky, it's really awesome to know that I'll be able to at least contribute a thousand dollars to uh, my Roth IRA in the year 2021. But with that said, I just want to thank you so much for watching this video. If you wouldn't mind going ahead and liking and uh, subscribing, that would be absolutely awesome. Make me feel like I'm doing my job right. Um, with that said, thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you, and God bless.